Happy Saturday before Halloween, everyone. Um, I'm going to go over on this side, but I know I can't see what's being seen on the camera. So I don't know if you're actually going to be able to see me in frame or whatever. Um, but I wanted to do this Facebook Live tonight um, because I promised that we are going to do the Dalek unboxing. The uncrating. This giant crate behind me is the Dalek that we bought from um, David Miller Creations. We got from him last year. Um, and it sat here for almost a year because it was given to us for Christmas last year. Um, so we had announced that we were not going to do a Pride Live tonight um, because instead of doing a Pride Live tonight, uh, we're doing a Pride Live from the studio, which is right there, um, on Tuesday, which is actual Halloween day. Um, so instead, as kind of like a special behind the scenes treat for all of you people out there who follow us and are friends with us, and also for all of you Doctor Who fans, uh, we thought that we would do the uncreating of the Dalek on Facebook Live. I will also edit this together at a later point and put it over on YouTube. I do have printed out instructions from David Miller Creations. This is the one that fabricated this giant beast of a Dalek. So the very first thing, this is not in the instructions, but because I'm a nerd, and I don't want to wreck it, and I want to save it, and why I want it to go upstairs, the very first thing is I'm taking off this police call box sign because it's going to go upstairs by our TARDIS. Yes, we have a TARDIS inside. It's not a three-dimensional TARDIS. It, we have a, um, well, I guess it kind of is. We have a, a sticker, like a, a door adhesive covering that is a TARDIS. So the, the, the room upstairs that is um, our media room where we keep DVDs, record albums, CDs, VHSs, that kind of thing. That is actually what is behind our TARDIS. So we want this to go by our TARDIS. Not gonna lie, this would have been easier if my drill was working, but my drill battery decided to die and not come back to life. So I need to be getting another one. I just haven't had a chance to order one from Amazon. And the other thing I found out from reading the instructions, because you know, I read them last minute, because I always feel like I'm running to try to catch up with everything. Do, um, is that you actually don't pry the crate open with a crowbar. There's no nail. I mean, there is nails, but you don't pry the nails open. You actually screw the front panel and the top panel of the crate off, which, of course, I don't have my drill bit. So, uh, I'll just have to do it with as much muscle as I can muster. And if it ends up taking too long, then I'll, I'll pause the Facebook video so you guys don't have to watch me struggle and grunt. And then turn it back on. There we go. All right. That will go up.
ready? You won't be, it will be low light. But it'll be better when I get the top part of the crate off. Oh, you can see pretty good. All right, let me, I'll bring, I'll bring the camera closer. Hold on, because it's on a tripod, so I gotta unscrew it. Mm. And that only took what? 40 minutes, <laughs> 40 minutes to unscrew it. It's gonna be a long night. Here we go. He's all wrapped up. I gotta remove all the styrofoam. His head is not on him. I think the head's down in there somewhere. This all comes with instructions, like a 13 page instruction manual. There he is in all his glory. We're gonna name him Rusty. I mean, you saw me next to the crate. You can only imagine how tall this, this dude is. Heavy duty. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to get this guy upstairs. We'll have to see. But isn't he beautiful? I know I sound like a total nerd now. Isn't it beautiful? This was actually created by a uh, special effects uh, fabricator, I, I guess is what you would call him. David Miller, um, he actually ha is very well known in the industry. Um, he worked on the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Um, he did like the baby Freddy Kruegers. Um, he, he, he's worked on a little bit of everything. He worked on Coneheads. I mean, we're talking about props and makeup for major motion pictures. So, um, this is a beautiful thing that he created for us. Uh, it was made to BBC specifications. Um, so it is, this is full size. This is what they look like on the set of Doctor Who. Um, when all of this is said and done, once I get him upstairs, I'm going to actually contact David Miller and see if he can make me a canine. Um, because I want the set. Come on, you gotta have this set. But uh, yeah, I encourage all of you to check check him out. David Miller Creations. Uh, you can Google him. He has an eBay store. He has a website and things like that. So, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to end the live feed for now. I'm gonna take some still shots and then I'm gonna continue with the unscrewing of the crate. Um, I may pop back on here with another live feed a little bit later on.
Okay, so second part of the Dalek unboxing. <clears throat> I have the screws removed off the top of the crate. And according to the instructions, <laughs> I wasn't joking when I said it came with a manual. Um, you unscrew the top and the front panels from the crate. Screws for these panels are clearly marked. Blah, 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 blah. Once inside the crate, remove the ratchet strap that is attached to the walls, and then you can remove the bubble wrap and the large plastic wrap covering the Dalek. So, the step after that is to start disassembling, removing the neck ring and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I am not going to do that on video, uh, but since it says that I can take off the top panel and then remove the bubble wrap and the large plastic, I thought I'd do that part on camera before I start disassembling. So. So I knew this one would be short, but I just wanted you guys to see him without the plastic wrap. So from, from here down, that's all one piece. Yeah. How I'm going to get that through a doorway, I do not know. But we'll take it one step at a time, right? Okay. I'll, I'll update you guys more later. Okay, so it took me two days because I had a stuck screw that I couldn't get out of the crate, of which uh, my neighbor came over and helped me with a drill because my drill had died. Um, but the Dalek is finally together. So I'm going to do a um, demo for you guys so you can see all the cool things he does. You'll notice we have the eye up here yes it really lights up we have his little phaser gun aka it looks like an egg beater we have his plunger all of this stuff is three-dimensional like all of it and what is cool about this thing is that it like i had explained before it, it's actually built to bbc specifications so if you're a Doctor Who fan and you've ever seen any of the like behind the scenes stuff from when they do the show or even the movies, you will have seen that the Daleks are built to where people, actors, get inside of them. So when they're filming, they have actors inside of them that are moving them around and, and you know, getting them to go where they're supposed to and things like that. Of course, in scenes where they're not cg like where there's millions of them but in scenes where there's like ones or twos there's actually actors inside the dalek so because this is built to bbc specifications you can actually get inside of this dalek this one right here 
You, I'm not going to show you because the top part is heavy and I don't want to break anything. And I just got them together, so I don't want to take them apart. Um, but this, this dome here, it lifts off. And then if you notice the grid here, the grill, I don't know if you can see it. It's mesh. It's not solid plastic. It's mesh. And the reason why is because this part lifts, lifts off as well. This part lifts off as well. And then this part is the part where the person gets in. So when you get in, I'll post a picture. I took a picture of it. So I'll post a picture in the comments of this video once it, it gets posted. Um, in this part, there is a bench that is built into the Dalek inside. So you, it's look like a giant trash can, right? When you look down inside, there's a little bench. So people can crawl in there sit on the bench then you have someone put this part on top and this part on top and the actor or whoever's in it uh looks through this mesh part and there's actually two little holes in the bottom of this platform for your feet so you can move the dalek you can pedal it and move the dalek with your feet kind of fred flintstoning it to use the Dalek to go after people, if you want to, if you want to chase your friends, um, and then if you get tired, you can sit down on the bench. In the meantime, you know, while you're waiting in between scenes, of course, that's why the bench is there. So this actually comes with a little remote control, and the reason why is because this Dalek, of which, by the way. We have named him Rusty, so everybody meet Rusty. Uh, if you are a Doctor Who fan, you'll know that reference from the Capaldi iteration. But um, he he actually talks. He has How twelve. Many pounds is it? I don't. It's got to be a couple. It's it's at least a hundred pounds, probably one hundred fifty two. Um, each piece is probably about fifty or sixty pounds. And there's one, two, three, four, four main pieces. And then this piece here is actually a double piece because there's an inner. It's all metal and wood. Right? It's all metal and wood. Um, it's, it's very cool. Very cool. So, okay. I'm going to demo all 12 of his sayings for you. All right, here we go. As you see, when he goes off, his little lights flicker on his ears. It is futile to resist. You will surrender. Anyone who decides to help the doctor will be designated as enemies of the Daleks and will be destroyed. Exterminate. That's when the Dalek gets pissed. Two more. All inferior creatures are to be considered the enemy of the Daleks at this point. You will obey the Daleks or you will be exterminated. All right. So that's all of his sayings. And like I said, um, you can crawl inside of him and be in. It, this is like the world's biggest, heaviest Halloween costume. <laughs> really uh the base is on wheels so if you get inside and you you want to pedal him around with your feet through the holes you can um without 
we, I will not be crawling inside. This thing is so tall. Like, <clears throat> I, I could barely reach down inside to screw them together. So, I will not be trying to crawl stand inside. Next to it and, and shovel, stand next to it 20 Let's see if I can. So it's about, well, my arms aren't that long. But it's about, about a little taller than me. I'm five foot six. So it's probably, I would say five, five, seven, five, eight. So, um, yeah. And if, if you don't have somebody inside of him, uh, then you just push him back and forth when you want him to move. Um, and there's a little switch under here, right under here where you can turn him on and off. Um, his dome has a built-in 12 volt battery wired into it, um, which means that when you've used it to exhaustion and he needs to be recharged, you just lift the dome off, plug him in, let him recharge, and then back on. You don't even have to buy giant automobile batteries for him or anything like that. So, so that yes. Yep, as I said, it's from BBC so Specs. Yeah, we could just, I would not do that, but we could, we could just sneak <laughs> it into the BBC. They wouldn't know the difference. So. It is futile to resist. You will surrender. All right, so that is our full size Dalek. Um,. And I'm going to put all of the videos and the images together into a video as well for YouTube. So, all right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. So for those of you that don't know, you know we have the Dalek because we've been talking about that on Facebook all weekend. But if you go upstairs here, we have a TARDIS as well. This is um, it's one of those vinyl stickers that you put on your door. And part of what came with the Dalek um, from David Miller Creations is the crate that the Dalek came in had a police public call box sign on it. It's a metal sign. So we figured we'd take it off the crate and put it above our TARDIS door so it can be there for its permanent home. Okay. The cats have been, lock have been uh, locked in their respective bedrooms until just now. So I'm going to let them out. They've never seen the Dalek. So here, let's, let's do Fritz first. Hold on. Fritzy, you want to come out? bothered by anything are you no he's like i'm gonna scratch my post right now i don't care i obey nope not even phased oh that time he looked up at it but he's like yeah whatever all right, let me go get the other two.
Hermes like, wait, <coughs> what is this? Ho Ho's like, what is this? Oh, Hermie did not like it. Did he run? Yeah, he, well, he got like super scared, but he kind of like ducked and squ waddled out of the room. Exterminate! Hermie, what is that? Seek, locate, exterminate! Yeah, Hermie does not like it. Yeah. He's the only one that cares. What about Ho-Ho? Ho-Ho does, doesn't care. Well, good. Glad you're not scared, right? Our programming does not permit us to acknowledge that any creature is superior to the Dalek. In fact, Ho-Ho's fascinated by it. He was like, look, he put his front paw up on it. He's looking up at the top. He's like, what is this? Well, you have to understand they can all three fit inside. <laughs> yeah, they could. We want programs to survive. They're like, yeah, don't care. Where's the food? 